I'm Angus Gray, I work for the Department for Work and Pensions and I'm head of the European Social Fund Division, which means I'm responsible for the ESF programme in England. Angus, when we first spoke back in 2011, you were relatively new to ESF and at that time you were talking about getting out into the field, finding out what was going on, setting priorities for the programme. How do you think the programme stands now, well over a year later, and have your initial impressions been confirmed or denied? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been one of the joys of the last, uh, of, well, of this job of the last year. I've been going out and about quite a lot, talking to uh, groups of local authorities, voluntary sector organisations, all sorts of stakeholders about the programme, and also sometimes visiting projects. And certainly, uh, one of the real privileges has been um, attending award ceremonies, where you get to hear some of the great work that uh, people are doing and the and the difference it's making to uh, individuals' lives. And some of the messages I've been hearing through, through all that have been very consistent, so particularly focusing on the future. Uh, people have a real desire for things to be more local, uh, more flexible, uh, and uh, the holy grail of all structural funds are uh, simpler. My overall impression, I suppose, uh, is still that the programme uh, continues to make a real difference to people's lives, and that the way we structure it and deliver it uh, has some real strengths, but um, particularly looking to the future, we can definitely make it better. When we last spoke, the ESF Families Programme was just coming into being. It's no secret that that programme's taken a lot longer to get up and running and really start to get numbers coming through than anybody had expected or hoped. What do you think we've learned from that? Well, I think the experience has highlighted some very interesting issues. I haven't come to any definite conclusions about any of them, but there's a, an issue about the balance between local and national design, for example, um, some tensions between contractual and more partnership ways of working. Um, some of the challenges of making innovative approaches work, particularly within the ESF framework, which to some extent is quite flexible, but in other ways uh, less so, particularly when it comes to what you can and can't do after you've let a contract. Um, and I think there is an issue also about balancing payment by results mechanisms, which tend to mean that money flows late with the very fixed deadlines, N plus two for those who are familiar with it, about when the uh, programme money has to be spent. And then, of course, underpinning all of that is the challenge of trying to work with some of the, uh, some of the hardest to help groups. How do you expect the families' work to unfold over the rest of the programme? Last month the government launched a new delivery agreement uh, between Job Centre Plus and local authorities, uh, which is designed to boost the employment goals of the wider government Troubled Families programme, of which the ESF is just a part. And that means, uh, among other things, there'll be a new network of 150 Troubled Families Employment Advisors who are seconded from Job Centre Plus into local authority Troubled Families teams. And they are explicitly designed to make those links work better at local level, to make sure all the data sharing that's needed so we understand who the families are, what help they're getting, what help they need, uh, improves massively. And I really hope and expect that one of the effects of those measures will be to boost referrals to the ESF programme itself. Um, it's hard, obviously, to be sure what the impact will be, uh, and I certainly don't ever expect the starts to, to match up to our um, original uh, expectations. Um, but we definitely hope to see a significant improvement so that we're, A, helping uh, more people, and B, can actually use the evaluation to learn uh, more about uh, the overall approach and what, what worked and what didn't in terms of actual provision, because you only get so far by... Um, fretting about what you did wrong in setting it up. Um, I'm keen to learn from actually what happens on the ground. So what, what you're saying is then, although the numbers have started to come up and there are better numbers of starts now, it's probably not going to get to the sorts of levels that were initially anticipated. That's right. We've seen a definite increase, um, but they're never going to catch up over the life of the programme to the total volume. We may get to a kind of a better monthly profile that more matches what we'd hoped to see, but it will because we started so slowly it'll never completely catch up. Does that mean then that there's likely to be an underspend on the families programme that might be recycled into other parts of ESF? Yes, uh, we're looking at the overall finances of the programme. Uh, we're having to manage the um, fluctuations in the euro as well. Um, so some of what might have seemed like a cash boon is actually just protection against and an otherwise uh, what would have turned into an overspend. But we're trying to make a judgement about what extra money might be available and what the best use of that might be given the relatively short period we have to spend it before the end of the programme.